In this video, we're going to see an example of a map collection, specifically the hash map that Java provides. Now, it's important for you to realize that at this point, the details about how you implement a hash map aren't important. Our focus in this video and for right now is going to be how to use hash maps. We'll talk about hashing later in the semester and perhaps maps as well, but our focus here is just on using the API as it's presented to us. So a hash map stores key value pairs. The key and the value each have their own types. They can be the same type or different types. So some examples, we could have a hash map that has the days of the week mapped with the names of the days. You could have a hash map with names and ages, or you could have a hash map with employee numbers mapped to salary. And notice in each of these cases, there's different types. We can have integers as the key, strings as the value, strings as the key, integers as the value, or we could even have objects of a type we define ourselves like an employee in the final example. So the Java hash map implements the map interface. So all the methods that we're going to see here are part of that, because again, we're going to program to the interface. We're going to create a reference to a map object and we'll instantiate a hash map. Also, keep in mind with hash maps, there's no guarantee as to the order in which the key value pairs are stored. So they're not sorted by key, they're not sorted by value necessarily. They may be or they may not be. So it just depends. It's just something that you can't expect to have in a certain order. So let's see a few example hash maps. So for the first one, we have best picture winners. And you can see that the key is the year and the value is the name of the movie that won best picture that year. We could also have a map of process IDs to the name of the process associated with that process ID. Now the examples we've seen so far have mapped an integer to a string. We could also map a string to a value. So here we're mapping football team names to the number of regular season wins they had in 2020. Now for our example today, we're going to create a grade book and we're going to map a string to an array list that holds grades. So you can see here, each list may have a different number of grades. So here it looks like Joey and Chandler and Janice were doing something during one of the tests. And so they all missed something. And you'll notice here, our keys are strings. The values are an array list. It's not just a single value. The value that's associated with the key is actually a collection. So we have more than one thing. Now, as far as the hash map is concerned, we have a key and a value. There's not multiple grades. There's just an array list of grades. So let's see how we implement this. So to declare the data structure, we're gonna have a map of a string to a list of integers. And notice there's actually two different generic types here. A map takes one type and it's gonna map it to this other type. We're gonna call that grades. And that's gonna be a hash map. That's the specific kind of map we're gonna use. Map is the interface, hash map is the actual type we're going to use. So we're going to create some lists later, or actually some array lists. And so we're just going to keep that as a list for now. We we'll use the interface. So we need to make sure that map and hash map are both imported. And now we can add things to the map. The function to do that is put. And notice you can see here, put takes a string key and a list value. So our key, we're going to have a name. So we'll say Drew, and then for Drew's grades, we're gonna make a new array list of integers, and we'll use the arrays as list function to let us have a list of some grades, 45, 78, and 52. And integer should be plural, and we'll need to be sure to import array list. So you can see all the things we're importing. So let's create two other students, and I'm not going to type all that out again. I'm going to be lazy and copy and paste it. So we'll have Judy, and we'll have Clay. Judy's grades are 95, 98, 92. Clay's grades are 60, 88, 74. And we'll do one more grade here. We'll give him a 93. Now you'll notice I already have written this average method that takes a list of integers and then returns the average. This just uses a for each loop and then divides that sum by the size of the list. So that way we can have different numbers of grades for each student. So let's print the grades and let's just run this now just to make sure that everything looks good. So here's Drew's grades, Judy's grades, Clay's grades. So that, that looks all good. So now let's print everyone's final grades. We're going to have a for each loop. This string is going to be one of these names. So we want to get the list of these first items in the pair for this for each loop. 
And the way we do that is we say grades.keyset. And that'll give us an iterable data structure that we can iterate in this for each loop. And then do a little bit of an indent. We'll print their name. And then we want to calculate their grades. So we use the average function, which takes a list. And now we need to get a list for whatever this name is. We need to get the corresponding list from the map. And the function to do that is get based on the name. And that should print all our grades out. So let's see. Let's run. And you can see here's everybody's final average. So that's a really quick example. There's a lot more you can do with maps. But the idea here is, is even if you don't know anything about hashing or anything about a map, you can actually use the data structure just by knowing a few of the functions that you need.